Tonight on Podcast Them Down, does Mike have enough coal to run his new steampunk pedal board? Let's find out. Podcast Them Down! Hail Metal Nation! This is Podcast Them Down. I'm Tim. That's Mike. And we are talking about uh, Mike's new pedal board and uh, uh, various uh, various setups. Because uh, I have... Uh, yeah, Mike showed me this thing, and it's uh, complicated as it usually is. Yes, and uh, yeah, it. but it got me to thinking how relatively simple mine was that I will be using for the uh, upcoming Eisenmore shows. <laughs> so I figured that uh, you know what a great way to lose an audience or gain the wrong kind of audience than to have a gear episode. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. All right. So. Um, pedal boards, uh, for those, for non-musicians, you know, uh, that's, that's the, the effects pedals that you have on the, that guitarists and bassists and who, and violinists in our case have in front of them that has all their effects or, uh, sound shaping or whatever on the floor. And I, uh, I was watching a thing with Richie Faulkner from, uh, Judas Priest. Um, KK Downing's replacement, and mm-hmm. uh, most most musicians, most pedal board, uh, <laughs> most guitarists have like all their pedals neatly arranged on a board of some kind. You know, like it could even be like a piece of wood, right? Yeah, and there are, there are people that have great pedal boards on a plank. Yep, and while Richie Faulkner just puts his pedals on the floor, you know, just like old times. He's like, oh, this is how I did it in the pubs. <laughs> now Michael Crummins from Green Carnation does it too. Yeah. But he only has like two pedals. Yeah, just so, well, yeah uh, uh, Richie Faulkner has a handful more than two, but uh, not that many. But yeah, um, but yeah, it got me to thinking uh, when I saw your, your pedal board at, at practice the other day. <laughs> I was like, oh, we got to talk about this. Um. Yeah, so I'll I'll let you take it away for a while, and then I'll interrupt. All right. Okay. So, okay. G- given given Richie Faulkner's approach, where it's just like, yeah, just put it right on the fucking floor. It's like, why would you do this? Like, why <laughs> why why have a pedal board at all? Um, and there, there's a few reasons. One is that if you have a complex setup, you now have a box with your complex setup just in it. Yeah, you and don't have to. No, you don't have to wire it every time, right? Um, now, if you're in a band like Judas Priest, you probably have roadies that do all this shit. Oh for yeah, you. yeah. You know the roadies yeah. just like spacing it out. <laughs> He's the one who yeah. has to wire the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So you know, if you're in a in anything less than a band that has roadies, which is probably most bands, uh, I would say. Uh, it, it's definitely a lot easier for you to just take your preset up thing and just plug your out your ins and outs that you need for it. Um, so it it can help with setup time. Um, it does protect your pedals. You don't have just like a bag of pedals. Uh, you know, in in general, it allows you to assemble kind of like a a neater repeatable thing right right to to gig with okay so my story with pedal boards in general is that i was trying to avoid them because i wanted to just do like a band in a box thing Mm -hmm. oh Um, oh, that's right oh my god i totally forgot about i mean i still use it i still use the digitech (laughs) yeah so so there is one there is one one u which is a rack sp- one like single rack space y- unit uh, that can do amp simulation, and it's called the D- Digitech GSP one one hundred one. And I'm unclear as to whether or not it's still produced, um, but uncharacteristically, Tim and I got really good deals on the GSP one one hundred ones. I usually just like I want it now, and I just click buy it now on eBay. Um, it, but I didn't even, for this. Like it's it sounds so good, even though it's. It's uh, 
like early technology. It was, it was, yeah. a, it came out after the line six, uh, bean, the kidney bean thing. Oh yeah. Was, that was terrible. It came out after that, but, uh, oh, oh, but we got the, we got the special firmware that adds the, the extra, the good amps, but yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, so like, yeah, on paper, this should sound horrible. This, this device should sound horrible, but it's like, yeah, it sounded pretty good. But, but, the, but you know, in my ideal, I would have like a a smallish, by which I mean like eight six to eight U rack with a box with just the whole band in it, and everybody just plugs into it, and then you don't do anything else. It um, was a good idea. It, the, the idea is fantastic. It's just unrealistic, um, which, which ends up being the problem. So, so like, no matter what, you want a band in a box, great, but who's going to manage it? It's not like a thing that you can collectively have, right? So if I want to tweak my sound, I need it. If Tim wants to tre- tweak his sound, he needs it. We don't want to just build it every single time we bring it anywhere. L- like, oh, you keep yours, I'll keep mine. Let's just do all our shit and then just reassemble it. It's like, no, that, that's <laughs> kind of useless. So, so what's the next best thing? It's like, okay, let's make a pedal board just does all this for me. It's not that much more complicated. And additionally, there's a few things that I have realized that are hard to not have at your feet, like a tuner. Um, and I know that sounds stupid, but I watched so many bands when I was younger that just had their tuner in their, like, in a rack sitting on top of their cabinet. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just do that. That's what they do. I was like, no, because sometimes I can't get to this fucking box, right? Like, it's trapped behind Dave. Right. Uh, and I can't, <laughs> I can't go look at my tuner. Um, there, uh, uh, modern, modern pet peeve is those clip on tuners. Oh yeah. I, yeah, it's fine, but I hate it when people leave it on their instrument the whole time. And it's just, sticking yeah. there. it's like, it looks so fucking dumb. <laughs> Take it off, you know, tune and then remove it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it does look kind of goofy, like from an aesthetic perspective. Okay, so can't get rid of the. Basically, you need a pedal board. There's, there's, there's no way around it. You, you need something at your feet, or let's say you need pedals, um, because there's just some things that you need close by. So, what I think the entire band ended up doing. Uh-huh. Like, like pretty much everybody that I know. <laughs> In my clip on. Uh, oh, <laughs> beautiful. You should just leave that on. Oh, yeah. Especially if you okay. cock it out at a really weird angle. <laughs> During the podcast. <laughs> All right, go on. Beautiful. <laughs> um, There's the screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> thumbnail. Right, so, so thumbnail. I think pretty much between all of the bands that Tim and I are involved in, everybody now has a floor amp sim. Yep. That's, that's, it's the future. Yeah. So Tim has a, a line six helix. Uh, Pete has a, a fractal AM three FM three AM three FM. I think it's, I think the, it's FM3. the FM. I'm not positive. Yeah. I have a quad cortex, um, a neural DSP, but it's like, there's 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 a Kemper version. They all sound good, right? Like they're all great products. Yeah, didn't didn't used to be the case, but now uh it doesn't matter which one <laughs> you get, you're gonna get a good sound out of it, you know? Yeah, I mean I mean I mean in it at this point, apparently with the quad cortex, it's so powerful that you could do your band in a box out of the quad cortex. Um uh, we've come full circle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but regardless, that's not what we're doing anymore because we're, we're past it. We've gave up on the band of the box. Um, so, okay. So it's like, all right, basically you just want for, for, for us and for a lot of musicians is like just pedal board with amp sim, maybe a few other pedals and that's it. Don't need much else anymore. Now you could be, there's boutique pedals that you can get you can go crazy with it but uh that's just kind of not how we want to roll simpler this way so 
uh, if you listen to my in my if you listen to the in ear uh, monitor episode, uh, you'll hear about my attempts to iterate, get slowly better and better, and get better like, like an even better, more slim down rack over time. Like with that, I've basically done that with my pedal board. <laughs> uh, so I started off with a Fractal Audio AX8, which is a big amp sim, but it's a good, it's good. Um, I think the, but the I Helix had, is bigger than everyone's. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I had it on this large, flat pedal board, which is neat. Um, but I just did not need it to take up as much space as it did. It took up a huge amount of space. It was hard to carry around. Uh, ended up being fairly heavy. Okay, so I'm, I'm so so I moved to a Temple Audio board, and I did not like the Temple Audio board actually. Um, but the interesting thing about that is I was able to actually pack. Uh, a power amp underneath it <laughs> so I can literally have everything uh, at the board. Um, so on on stage, you are running your base amp sim into a power amp and then into a cabinet. An FR cabinet. FR, FR. Correct? Yeah, it almost doesn't, like, when it comes to live... Like if there's a cab already there, I'll just use that, and yeah. it'll sound good enough <laughs> for live. Um, FRFR is flat; is full range flat response, which means the speaker, in theory, <laughs> doesn't yeah, color does the not, sound. Yeah, like typically a guitar cab is kind of tuned for more guitar frequencies, and a bass cab. I noticed a lot of bass cabs are apparently just kind of FRFR are are closer to FRFR by default uh, than I think I realized. However, um, I'm sure bass oriented cabs are kind of more bass focused. But yeah, FRFR is supposed to be almost more like a PA, yeah, um, like a PA speaker. Okay, so move to the Temple Audio Board again. It was huge. I had everything packed into it, though, which was kind of neat. Um, but I do not like their mounting system, where you're supposed to use like their they, they give you like these plates uh -huh. that you you're supposed to adhere to your pedals. I don't know how you're supposed to get them off properly. I'm sure that there's like an FAQ somewhere that says like, "Oh, you should have used this solvent. You should have done it." <laughs> um, but I, you know, without destroying the paint, the the finish on the backs of your pedals, once they're on there, they're on there. Um, so I honestly, just because of the mounting system, I did not like the Temple Audio. Um, it's a neat product, but I think the mounting system is too destructive. Um, yeah, so you mount a plate onto your pedal and then you put it on the board and then you go underneath and use a thumb screw and screw it on. It's, it's not terrible, but from there, I started trying to slim down. Um, so I started trying to put a non amp sim board together. I don't know if I ever told you this. So yeah. I actually have a ton of, pe I have a ton of pedals that are designed with the idea of just not just using the pedals to craft the sound, including an IR loader <laughs> pedal. Um, but that never really came to fruition. Like you some... could just get a dark glass and be done with it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the simplest you thing. You need to just, take out another literally... mortgage, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I ended up doing... So, so I play bass and guitar, depending on which band I'm in. It's like, okay, I'm going to get this quad cortex. Because somebody told me about it at a coffee shop somewhere, and I pre-ordered it, and it came faster than I anticipated. <laughs> um and it basically has just solved all of my my space and gearing issues because it's compact. It's much smaller uh, than you'd think it would be. And then it's also like, it just does what I need. It, it handles the effects that I want. So now I've been trying to like pack this in the way that I want. So I've got a few pedal boards trying to slim down. And I don't want to have to go, I don't want to go into all that because I could talk your off about that. But what I have originally, eventually, after buying enough of these, I was like, I got to stop. 
if I'm just going to keep buying these, I need to just go for the thing that I really, really, really want. <laughs> um, and I have been eyeing Schmidt Array pedal boards for hey, quite a while. Hey, this is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> Schmidt Array? Schmidt Array. S-C-H-M-I-D-T space uh, Array. It. All right. Yeah, um, go on. So these are like, they're nice. They're made to order. They look beautiful, in my opinion. Um, and like, okay. Oh, well, okay. So I, so I commissioned one. Uh, Listen to you. I talked, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I talked to uh, Martin Smith, who's the, like the owner but isn't Schmidt German for Smith? Oh, it is. All right, Maybe. Go on. Um, and it's it's a really fascinating process because I like over time I've got kind of like some weird, um, I've got some weird gear, uh, and now why don't we move over to my my second camera oh you're so fancy i mean it's yeah, funny because i have i have two webcams too but one's pointed at the ceiling so that's not gonna help yeah. <laughs> uh forgive how messy my desk is because i'm actively trying to build this thing all right all right so i am looking at a uh top-down view that just has a quad cortex and expression pedal and a uh wireless unit in yes. a in a wooden box Yes, so this is the Schmidt Array pedal board. So before I do anything else, uh, not one of the a things sponsor, is cool. not unless not they want to be, unless they want to be. Yeah, I, I'm happy to make them. I I, I quite enjoy this. Um, so you can get this lid <laughs> baked that just attaches to the pedal board. I gotta say, I love that handle though. Yeah, the handle's cool. It's 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 like a spring with with like I don't know, like a plastic tube around it. Yeah, but, but it's like you know. it's, it looks like it won't dig into your hand, right? Yeah, it, it it's surprisingly comfortable to use. Um, so this thing clips on at the sides, and I can literally just carry it like that. Um, one of the things that I think is really interesting about these is that they, uh, quite a few of them. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think all of them are. Are all two tiered? Hey, so, does that lid come off? Is yes, it, it does. It's on those like right. hinges where, yeah, you can just lift yeah. it off. Nice. Yeah, so so it's basically held secure by it closing, but then after that, and you don't need to get them with a lid. The lid is is extra. No, you. We're going on the road. You need the you need the lid. Well, if, if you look at the FAQ, it's like. You can just use like a regular gig bag or, 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 or something else if you really want to. You don't need to get the lid. You can just put it in like a mono case or whatever you want to do. Um, but, okay, so one of the things I found interesting is I, I have this expression pedal, which is neat. It's a DB instrument amp. Oh, yeah, uh, you, you got to show, show that off. Yeah, so... <laughs> So I, I was like, here's the thing. I don't know if this is going to fit uh, because the one thing that this does is, you know, most expression pedals, they go up and down. This one goes side to side as well. Um, <laughs> That's so cool. But it's like... Uh, it's so unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I twist my ankle using that thing. <laughs> like, effectively, I use this for volume and I use this to control, like, distortion level for the bass. That's basically That's what cool. I mean. That is cool. Yeah, so, yeah, so so for the clean sections, I'm over here, and then when we go heavy, like for the most part, I'm just sitting over here. I I um, I have a uh, I have a snapshot on my Helix for clean and distortion. I I have there's no right. I I you, can't, you I can't to, fine tune it like you can. Yeah, you, you, you have I to mean, get I kind could, of funky but... with right now. It, you have to get kind of funky with the routing to do it too, like. Because you're effectively like, this is really just kind of like mixing between two different right. signal paths. Like I've got like a less distorted path and a more distorted path. 
so it's just kind of like fade slowly between them. Um, but anyway, I brought this up and I was like, yeah, I'm not sure if this is going to fit. And he's like, no, I know, I, I know this, I know this pedal, <laughs> which I found very surprising. Cause it's like, I don't know, this is neat, but I don't think it's particularly popular or anything. Like, I don't know that a whole lot of people use these, <laughs> um, but he was well aware and he actually had like a pre-prepared like animated gif showing it like working okay dude i just had a thought so you got two axes of motion what if you could also rock the pedal oh my god <laughs> then you you could like do this you could uh it'd be like um yeah uh like, like a, an aileron or yeah. like like on a plane. <laughs> or a weeble wobble. <laughs> <laughs> then you All really right. get hurt using it. <laughs> yeah, you're you're just fucked. Like like just just detach your ankle. <laughs> okay. So this particular board is actually built around the quad cortex. Like if you go onto the site, it's for this. Um, but one th- there isn't really a whole lot that makes makes this board specifically for this to my knowledge other than this thing here it's kind of shaped in a way that kind of uh fits the quad cortex well right yeah so it's kind of like a shelf um yeah that uh, how would you there's a cutout for the expression pedal but you can like add some extra pedals and stuff below it and it doesn't interfere with the quad cortex yeah so it, it hides a lot of the pedal routing as well which is another thing that's neat now i am actively working on this so underneath here is a total mess but um here we go okay so you can lift up that little yeah. shelf yeah so here i've got a Seox dc7 um which is a really awesome pedal board power supply. Uh, Does it, it also it, power the quad cortex or is that separate? So it can power it on its own. If you get a bunch of um, join, joiner, uh, I don't know what you call the cables. So, so Seox has these cables that are, these are all RCA jacks, you know, like you, used to plug your Super Nintendo into the TV. Oh, um, I know. <laughs> yeah, so, so it has these jacks where you literally, it takes two RCAs and puts them together. Uh, but you, by doing this, you can effectively sum up the two amps needed to run the quad cortex. Mm. However, they added this thing, or they released this thing, which isn't, like, if you're already, if you're already deep into the Seox DC7, this isn't much more. This takes a 24 volt feed off of the Seox 7, a DC7, which is meant for linking together multiple power supplies. And this produces a 2 amp uh, 9 volt signal or 12 volt signal. I guess I have it at 12 volt. Okay, so I guess, I guess, this, I guess this is 12 volt, not 9 volt, but regardless. <laughs> um, so now this is just one cable instead of, you know, like a billion. Um, so I, I'm, I get the impression that this was released specifically for the quad cortex, but it works. So I'm happy with it. Um, okay. So I'm using dual lock to secure all this stuff. Uh, if you haven't used dual lock, I have. it's like Velcro. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. it's like ultra Velcro. It's wonderful. Yeah. It, Velcro, if you absolutely 100% must ensure that it never moves, <laughs> dual lock. Uh, it's expensive. It's not. I mean, it's not like horribly expensive, but it's it's one of those things where you're like, I'm I'm going to buy some dual lock, and you're like, oh god damn it! <laughs> like, why is that like thirty dollars? Like, yeah, okay. So, but in my opinion, for pedal boards, it's fantastic. Um. Okay, another thing that's interesting about these in general is you've got some routing options. So here I've got some XLRs and a t- this like TRS 
this, this kind of TRS output, uh, which I, I don't know how easy it is that is to see, but I've got some over here as well, and then I've got so, I've got a MIDI thing here, which I find this to be interesting. There isn't really like an off-the-shelf MIDI feed through that you can find, and it looks like they've created their own. <laughs> um, and so and it these looks, it, these all go to the outside of the case. Yes, and the idea is that you can kind of collect whatever signals you want and then just kind of plug into these instead of plugging directly into the quad cortex. Um, you know, that it's with the Schmidt array, that it's hidden under the shelf is super cool because, you know, at a certain point, you have a mess, right? Like, there's no way to get around having these cables running all over the place. Right. You can clean them up. I've started to kind of do this. You can't really see it here, but I've got a bunch of tie downs that are kind of trying to guide the, this power cable that goes to the Seox DC seven in. Um, and I'm going to do the same once I get all the pieces that I want here. Um, but uh, this, this just makes everything so nice. Uh, it's like, okay, all, all your dirty secrets of how the hell you push this all together is good. You know, You'll never know. Um, <laughs> unless you watch this episode. Or listen. Unless you watch this episode. <laughs> um, the the ins and outs, I think, are a neat addition because this is something that most pedal boards kind of leave to you, save for Temple Audio. You know, it, it, it is easy enough to just plug right into this, right? Like, you you could just have, your, have this exposed. You plug right into your quad cortex. Uh, instead of having all these patch bays and stuff. But if you start doing anything a little bit, like, kind of, I'll say fancier, uh, this can get a little organizationally complicated for stage setup. And I feel like something like this really helps with that. I, You know, is it worth buying something this crazy for it? Probably not, but I really like this. <laughs> so, um, uh Another thing is that, you know, I, I know that uh, XLR TRS jacks nowadays, I mean, we're, they're probably rated for like tens of thousands of uh, unplugs and plugs, you know, like disconnects and connecting them. Right. But by having a patch bay like this, you're going to significantly cut down on... You're, you're going to reduce the risk to this thing breaking like a jack in your uh, floor modeler breaking. And instead you'll just break one of these things. And these are like 10 bucks. Right. So I'd rather break the $10 part than break this thing and have to ship it all the way to Finland for them to fix it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the plan for the future here, uh, I'm going to get a, a DI to put right here. Um, so that I can have a DI out because I've had a few situations in the past where uh, I've had all my fancy. Yeah, I, I, Tim remembers this. I've got this fancy base set up, and they're like, "Oh, I need the DI," and it's like, "Oh, I'm not really set up to do that." Like, uh, no, you don't I, need I, the DI. You, you will use what I give you. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, I've definitely had sound guys ask for the base DI, um, which maybe is my own naivete. Like I was like, I just didn't really expect that was a thing. So this is handy to have on hand, uh, just a, a DI signal for your base. Cause if you get somebody that asks for it, you don't have to like patch a DI. If you've got a rig that's like this self-contained, you don't have to patch in, uh, the DI anywhere, you know, it, like you're using a wireless, you don't, you're not worried about, uh, you know, you're not plugging into anything and they want a DI. It's like, well, where the hell do I put this? Um, yeah. You just have it on hand. You just, and then either you just tell them that you have a DI uh, and ask them to give you an XLR, or if they don't understand, just take the DI, say thank you, unplug it and plug it into the DI on your pedal board. Cause I've had to do that a few times. Um, <laughs> so, so, but basically, you know, you know, my read on this is like I, I'm just able to do all this kind of really cool stuff in this little cavity, um, 
and, and I, it, it's just kind of like deceptively useful just to have a little shelf on the, um, on the pedal board. You know, it's, it's not a whole lot bigger. Um, I would say like width by depth, uh, than a pedal board nano or no, a pedal board classic junior. It's a little bit deeper. Um, and I don't, I don't know. Is the pedal board classic a little bit deeper than the junior? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but overall, I don't know. This is a pretty neat. This is a pretty neat pedal board. I like it quite a bit. Um, right now, I'm waiting for just like various jacks to solder together new cables. Some of them, I've got these Cable Techniques flat uh, XLR jacks, and they're literally like. It's just the cable just juts out of the end of the XLR jack, so it's <laughs> extremely low profile. Nice. Um, and then I've got some low profile TRS jacks coming, and that's that's about it. I'm, I'm trying to decide whether or not this is interesting or horribly boring. <laughs> well, for what it's worth, I think it's this. interesting, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna cut anything out. Okay, good. Uh, actually, one other thing that I that is kind of neat, uh, just to just to go over it. Um, if I can do it. Uh, come on. <laughs> Sorry, one second. If I can this make the funny this part. Work. This is the funny uh, part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can edit this. Nope. All right. <laughs> this, this bit is detachable, so I can actually, like... If I disconnect the um, disconnect the expression pedal, so I don't like rip cables out. Um, there we go. I was pulling from the wrong wrong part, and it is underneath. <laughs> there are parts of it that are like underneath the quad cortex, so I have to be a little bit. Uh, there we go. Do, do, do. Okay. So oh, so it's just, like raised up. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, yeah it's it, so that's the thing. It's it, yeah, it's raised up, so you can actually do a bunch of pedal routing underneath your expression pedal here. That's cool. Um, yeah. So, like my original plan, I've got this coming from my wireless, was to literally kind of route it around like one of the feet of this thing. Yeah, and just have it kind of go through this way. Um. Which is pretty slick. Oh, and I actually didn't realize that there was like a cable. There's a cable hole here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, there's the best way I know to describe this pedal board is like they designed it with the idea of you being able to um, tuck everything away as much as possible, right? It, it without having to do without having to go into like Herculean. Um, <laughs> I'm going to leave it like this so you don't have to watch me struggle <laughs> to get it back in. You can, oh, you can oh, do that oh, after oh. we're done. <laughs> okay. So you Sounds don't have good. a power amp anymore. Uh, I, I, so actually, I do have a power amp, uh, but now it just lives externally because it's just not worth trying to build it into the pedal board. It, it's, th there's, a few, there's a few concerns with doing that. One is like running an actual speaker cable alongside your signal. Um. That's where you actually can get into interference situations. Right. And two, it's just like the the things that you have to do, the demands that you have to make to the specs of a pedal board are far greater. Uh, it, it requires you to like have a, a pedal board with a deep enough cavity to house a power amp, and you have to have a very specific power amp. Um, in, in this case, the only, th literally the only thing I'm aware of that could handle like a base signal and is small enough to potentially fit in a cavity like that is the De uh, Demeter Mini 800D. I don't know of anything else. It's the <laughs> only product I'm aware of that can do this because it's an 800 watt, uh, at four ohms, uh, power amp that fits in a mono have you, you know, like the mono guitar tick uh, thing that you can put on the bags. It's 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 not very large, right? It's it's, but it's it's literally the smallest uh, power amp that I'm aware of. 
So you would need to somehow sh- like get a pedal board with enough clearance to just house that in. So now it just has to, it lives externally. If there is a cab present <laughs> and a power amp present, I'll just use that. But you just I just plug right into that and it just makes things easier. Nice. So, are, yeah. are you ready for counterpoint? Yes, I'm ready for counterpoint. So you mentioned the Helix quite a few times. Well, I'm not going to mm-hmm. be bringing the Helix on tour. <laughs> oh, we're going to go. I think I know what brand we're going to go with. We are going to go with my cheap alternative, <laughs> which, uh, unlike you, I can just hold up with one hand. <laughs> so here's my entire pedal board. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, I love the expression pedal. Yeah, this is this is for Eisenmore. So for Eisenmore, all I need is distortion and occasionally clean. And depending on the set, which uh, spoiler alert, uh, we don't, we will not be using on tour the acoustic sim. That's it. That's oh, all yeah. I need. So, um, so what I have here is I have a, a pedal train <laughs> nano. So the smallest one. Oh, wait, it's right. nano plus. So it's not it's, quite the smallest it's, one. It's the same depth, but it's longer. Right. Uh, I got my line six uh, wireless, so I don't have a fancy sure wireless. And then I have, I never figured out if it's Hotone or Hot One. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. But this <laughs> is the Ampero, all right? And um, the, uh, the, uh, one of the physical amps I own <laughs> is the uh, Richie Blackmore Engel. Which is mm-hmm. based on the uh, the Savage series, the uh, the Angle Savage series. Well, this happens to have a model of that amp. Isn't that nice? Nice. So that is the <laughs> amp I'm using, and then uh, yeah. So I have I have that, and then I have a clean, and that's pretty much all I use for Eisenmore. However, there is an expression pedal, so I can do volume stuff and it's teeny tiny which is hilarious uh but it works yeah one other thing i love about this is you can so you see there's two xlrs and two Mm -hmm. uh quarter inch outs you can set it so one of these has an amp sim and the other doesn't oh that's nice not not amp sim cab sim yeah 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 i I know what you meant so uh the way Eisenmore works is we got to plug in amp simmed signals into the in ears. And then if we're playing through an amp on stage, you need a non cab simmed thing. And that's a system level thing on here. So I, so left is cab sim, right is no cab sim, which it, like you can do that on the helix, but it's difficult. Um, right. And then I got my power supply, Velcroed in the the bottom. I have a hilariously short cable. <laughs> how? So I got how a many, need, uh, I, I need to be near an out outlet. How many um? How many amps does that thing? Pro- how many amps does that uh, power supply produce? What a good guess, question. One point six. That thing needs two uh, amps. One point like three. Two. One point three. 1.3 okay damn i wonder what the power draw is uh, i have um i have i have several seox pow- uh, power supplies <laughs> um older ones that would probably power that yeah so uh since i don't need much for eisenmore because it's just like one thing i can get away with that but you're gonna love my backup because you know on tour you should probably bring a backup backup have we announced the tour yet? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's four uh, gates. I don't know if it's a tour, but <laughs> eh, maybe who knows? But uh, it, it, all the all the events are there. Yeah, I think it's okay to, to let's call to it, it. Well, yeah, let's call it a tour and let's pretend it's uh, announced and promoted. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. So that's nice. But what if that shits the bed? Are you ready for my backup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to bring the Moor 009 
which is the Richie Blackmore angle <laughs> uh, the, modeler. So the Moore stuff is surprisingly solid. Yeah. So I've had this a while. Uh, I I've basically use it when I have to, but yeah, I'm, not, I'm just going to toss this in the bag and you know, let's, let's say uh, I plug into the wrong outlet and the Ampero blows up. <laughs> here's, here's my backup. And uh, <laughs> I'll bring you, I'll bring you uh, my, uh, my uh, Sans Amp DI, you know, for your backup. <laughs> so. I have, I, I have a dark class Alpha and Omega. <laughs> Yeah, but do you want to bring that on tour when you could be? <laughs> I could be rocking I mean, the Sans Amp. I, I kind of feel like I just want to bring this tiny pedal and be like, "Where do I plug in?" <laughs> I I mean the, the the dark glass. It's not like it's it's not like this. I mean it's it's pretty small. It's if if you were to hit somebody with it, it would it hurt? Yes. Well, yeah, no, this, you, this, the, I don't think this would even bruise you. This, this yeah. lower pedal. It's, it's super it, it, tiny. It's probably like, I would say five, four, four to five of those, yeah. but like in all directions, right? Right. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, they call it the black Knight too. Cause it's the Richie Blackmore. Nice. Thing. Yeah. Um, this thing is nice. It's, it's, not trebly enough. Um, I mean, you, you fix that with an EQ, though, if you really care. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's just one output, so it's either cab simmed or it's not. But, you know, that's like details, whatever. And then uh, for stage sound, I have a head rush um, powered speaker. Yeah. So Those are nice. Yeah, and it's like plenty loud. <laughs> so I think we'll be good no matter what situation we end up in at least for my guitar and your bass <laughs> so yeah i don't know about and, any and, of the other guys <laughs> so so i you know looking at these two approaches i feel like you've got like a very targeted approach it's like this is what eisenmore needs that's exactly this is all right. I need. that is exactly right now like and i have I, I have eisenmore patches all over my helix and i love the helix right. but i'm going for compactness i'm going for simplicity on tour yeah, I, so I have a tendency in general, not just with this, but I always want to make like the God version of something, which is probably stupid, but that's what I want to do. Uh, um, so, so this is basically the God pedal board. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be like, oh, if I want to play guitar, that bass, that. Do I want to? Yeah, that's like I, I've got. That's how I yeah. run the Helix, but that's not how I right. run. Uh, you know, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely value in uh, both approaches because I think for your pedal board, I mean, that's probably not a ton of money to get that rolling. No, I mean, it's, it's not it's like pretty, it. Yeah. Well, uh, Ampere, uh Hotone Hot One <laughs> came out with a new version, so that pedal is probably even cheaper <laughs> than it was when yeah. I bought it. But I'm guessing it's a few hundred, what, like two, three hundred? Yeah, something like that. And uh, it's not without its problems. I mean, the the reverb, for example, is total shit. It's like yeah, but awful, you're not buying you're awful. not buying that for the reverb. Yeah, and I'm not using the reverb because uh, again, I'm just I just need a a distorted tone and a clean tone, and that's it. I'm done. Um, Burning shadows way more complicated. RVG even more complicated, you know. But uh, now. You could actually replicate quite a bit of this with individual pedals, but it gets, I think you'd get really specialized really fast. Um, like, you could go get a distortion pedal and a pedal that rec that's kind of like emulates a clean tone and then like, you know, A, B switch it. Yeah. With a, with a cab sim in front of it, uh, behind it all. At, at the end of it all. Um, and all those things exist, but it's not going to be like this. You're going to spend way more than it is for the hot one, hot hotone. Um, hot one hotone. And it's a, hot one hotone. Maybe it's and, Italian. And Maybe it's like otone. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But, you know, with all the 
like the helixes and the quad cortexes, you're getting these little tiny ones now that are actually pretty fucking yeah. good. Yeah, this is this is plenty fine. <laughs> you know, uh, could be yeah, better. You're not, you're not could be worse. I mean, this is it's not as versatile as that kidney bean thing we mentioned earlier, but I mean it. It uh, yeah, but it, for what it's yeah, doing, he, it sounds good. Yeah, and you're going to be on stage. You know, I, I feel like you know when you're in a live environment, it kind of tolerates a little bit. It tolerates a um, less pristine tone, right? Because oh just, yeah, like, it's I, I do not use these for recording. Let's be clear about that. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're you're just trying to gig around. You want to spend a few hundred bucks and get something that if it gets stolen, you're not going to cry about having a targeted. Uh, pedal board like this is not a bad idea all right absolutely that's all i got uh, yeah i think that's all i got too so uh yeah. until next time metal nation yeah. keep your backups uh handheld fist size so no one walks off with it and keep your arrays schmitted hey fa- <laughs> family show <laughs> <laughs>